everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I hope that you all will like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are going to be sewing the skirt on my new early spring pattern, Know Me ME 2013. I'm going to be making the short version of the skirt in this video. But if you want to make the long view, the steps are still the same. You just have a little bit more fabric to work with. So go ahead and cut out your pattern, cut out your fabric, transfer all your markings, and let's start sewing. To get started working on our skirt, the first thing that we're going to do is to grab our pattern piece number 9. Once you have pattern piece number 9, you want to go ahead and grab pattern piece number 10. This is our placket. You should have cut out two, and one of them you fused with interfacing. As you can see, I've already fused this one here with interfacing. And what we're going to do is right side spacing, we're going to match up our notches and pin our plaque it in place. Now that we have the interface plaque it pinned on to our skirt front with right sides facing, we can go ahead and stitch it in a 5 of an inch seam allowance and your plaque it will not match at the bottom of your skirt. You should have transferred a marking. It will match up there. So again, if it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, it's not supposed to. Let's go ahead and stitch it now. Now that we have the interface placket sewn on, you want to press your seam going toward the placket. So go ahead and give that a press. After you have it pressed, now we can grab the other placket. And for this one, we want to press up 5 eighths of an inch along the edge that has the notches. And then you want to trim it down to 3 eighths of an inch. So I've already done that for this one. Again, I pressed up 5 eighths of an inch and then I just trimmed off a quarter of an inch. So now it's 3 eighths of an inch. So now we can go ahead and pin this right side spacing to this placket here like so. So I'm going to grab some pins and go ahead and pin this in place. Okay, after you have it pinned, now we can go to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch along the sides and the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And down here along the lower edge, we will stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance when you stitch across. So again, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way along the long edge and 5 8 of an inch seam allowance along the end of the placket. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, after you have your placket sewn on that's not interfaced, you want to go ahead and trim down your seam and clip your corners. So I'm just going to trim my corner down here. Once you have it trimmed, now we can do some understitching. So for this placket here, you want to make sure that you have your seam allowance facing towards the placket. And you just want to do understitching as far as you can go. Again, making sure that you have your seam facing toward this placket here, and we're going to do understitching really close to this seam. But let's go ahead and do that now. All right, right, now that we have our understitching done, I have mine done here. I've gone ahead and pressed this placket toward the inside. And when you press, you need to press the folded edge over your seam here. So I just have the folded edge just slightly past the seam here. And now what we want to do is base close to this inner pressed edge of the placket. But we're going to end about four inches from the lower edge. We're going to finish this portion in a later step. So if you want to get a ruler, have my ruler here. You can lay that over and just place a pin at four inches. So that way you know to stop your basting stitch. So now let's go ahead and go to the sewing machine. And again, we're just going to baste along this folded edge here. Again, don't go past your pin all the way up here to the top. And then you will also baste across this edge here along the top. Let's go ahead and do the basting stitch now. And then after it's basted, you'll be able to flip onto the right side and just top stitch following along with your basting stitch. Yeah. 
Okay, now that you have done your basting stitch and you followed up with your top stitch, so this is how mine looks along the inside, and then on the outside, this is how it looks here, so I have it top stitch closed. So now we can go ahead and do our buttonholes. Now with buttonholes, every sewing machine differs, so if you don't know how to do a buttonhole, you may need to refer to your sewing machine manual. If your buttonhole markings have kind of disappeared since you've been constructing the skirt, just go ahead and grab your pattern piece, you want to lay it back over on your placket and just transfer your buttonhole markings again. And now we can go ahead and do the buttonholes. For the ones that are down here, do not apply those just yet. You want to do those after we have secured the bottom portion because again, we stopped four inches from the lower edge. So this portion shouldn't be closed just yet. So we'll come back and do those last buttonholes once we have that finished but for now we can go to the sewing machine and go ahead and stitch on the buttonholes that we can get to Now that I have the buttonholes sewn on, now I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of fray check before I open them. So I'm just going to put some right down the center, just a very thin layer. You don't want too much. You can do this on the front and the back if you like. It does help with fraying. Knits don't tend to fray as much as wovens, but I like to just put it on there anyway. I'm gonna let that dry and then once it's dry, we can go ahead and cut the buttonholes open. Okay, it has dried and I've gone ahead and opened up my buttonholes. I use this little mini um, buttonhole mat and this tool here. I purchased it from Amazon and you can see, here's a close up of the tool. It just easily goes right into the buttonholes so you can just go back and forth on your little mat to just open it up so this is what i use i do know some people that use a seam ripper they'll put a pin at the top of the buttonhole so they don't slice through it and then they just use their seam ripper to cut through it i do find this to be a little bit better i have sliced through a few buttonholes myself so i did go ahead and get this tool and i really do like it so after you have your buttonholes opened up, now we can go ahead and move on to the next step. The next thing that we're going to do is grab pattern piece number 12. Pattern piece number 12 is our left facing. Make sure that you trim yours off at the right cutting line. So if you're gonna go with the shorter skirt, there is a line where you can cut for view C. So make sure that you cut on the right line for your left facing. So again, go ahead and grab pattern piece number 12. And we want to do an edge finish along the side as well as the upper edge of your facing. So you can see here, I just went ahead and used my serger. But after you have your edge finish done, then you wanna go ahead and grab pattern piece 11. This is the left side front. You should have transferred some notches here. They match to the notches on the facing. So we're gonna match those up right sides facing and start to pin those in place. Okay, after you have it pinned, now we can go ahead and stitch in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. After we have it stitched, then we will do a little clip right here above the facing. We will just clip into the seam allowance. So you don't need to make a really large clip. Make one that's really small right in the seam allowance above the facing. Let's go ahead and sew it in place first. Okay, I have it stitched. I'm gonna go ahead and clip right here above the facing. So I just placed the clip right here and I did not go past the seam allowance and I just kind of eyeballed the stitch that I have right here at 5 eighths of an inch. Now that we have that clip, we can trim this seam down here. Don't go up here past the clip. And then we can fold the facing over and do under stitching. So again, let's go ahead and trim our seam fold it over, you can give it a press, and then do some understitching right here along the facing. Okay, now that we have it understitched and we have turned it to the inside and pressed it, now we can stitch a quarter of an inch away from the upper edge up here just to secure it, 
and then we can baste the lower edge together with the raw edges. So first, go ahead and do a stitch, again, a quarter of an inch along the upper edge, just to secure it toward the inside. So let's go ahead and do that stitch now, and then we can baste the lower edge here. Okay, now that we have done our quarter of an inch stitch, you want to go ahead and transfer your stitching line. If that line is gonna disappear while you've again been making the skirt, just go ahead and grab your pattern piece and just transfer that line. Now the direction has us going ahead and stitching our darts in the back, but I like to go ahead and just finish the skirt. That way we can start working on the back and sewing the side seams. So go ahead and grab your skirt that we have been working on here. So for this, our curved edge here, we're gonna place it right along that stitching line, just like so. And right here at that large dot that we transferred, we're gonna place a pin right here. Like that. Because we are gonna stop stitching there. So we're gonna be stitching again, right along that stitching line that we transferred. So just make sure that you have but you're right along that stitching line. And we can go ahead and pin it in place. Okay, now that we have it pinned, we are going to top stitch right here along this folded edge of the placket all the way down to the large circle and we'll back stitch there. So let's go ahead and do that now and then you can just baste the top edges together. Let's go ahead and do our top stitch now. Okay, now that we have a top stitch, this is what mine looks like along the outside. And again, right here at my large dot, I back stitch there. This is what it looks like along the inside. Let me just flip it around here. I'm gonna clip away some of my loose threads. As you can see here along this portion here of that facing, I did finish the top edge with my serger. And you can also see that it's just kind of in here kind of flappy. In the samples that I sewed, I did stitch right on top of this top stitch, the previous one that we did, just to kind of secure that in place. It's totally optional. Once we attach the waistband, it won't move around so much, but if you do just want to secure this down, again, on the outside here, where we did this first top stitch, you could just top stitch through there, catching in this part of the facing. That way it's not flapping and just doing what it wants on the inside of the skirt. Okay, once we have this secured, now we can go ahead and grab our back piece. For our back, you want to go ahead and do your darts. I've done both of my darts here, and with your darts, you should have transferred a point, and you just want to pin your dart legs that you transfer, pin them together, and then you will stitch starting at the widest point of the dart, going down to the point, and when you get to the point, you don't back stitch there, you just tie a knot to secure it. You can back stitch at the beginning though. Once you have that done, then you can press your darts going toward the center, and now we can sew it right sides facing to the skirt. Okay, here's my skirt here, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the back piece, and with right sides facing, I'm just going to pin along the sides. Okay, once you have one side seam sewn, you pin the other one the same way. For my side seams, I am gonna use a zigzag stitch. While I was doing all the stitching along the front, I was just using a straight stitch. But now for the side seams, I do wanna make sure that everything is stretching around the body, so I am gonna use a zigzag stitch for the side seams. Let's go ahead and stitch them in place now. Now that we have our side seam sewn, you can see here I have mine sewn and I have finished off the raw edges. So next we can go ahead, put this to the side and start to work on our waistband. 
far waistband, which is our casings, our front and back casing. You should have transferred some dots along one side. On those dots, we wanna make sure that we keep the middle of it open. So on one side, you can just stitch it straight down using a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then on the other side, you want to begin stitching on the end, stitch to the first dot and back stitch. Leave this here open for our elastic, begin stitching at the next dot and then stitch all the way to the other end. So again, go ahead and lay your casing pieces right sides facing and go ahead and stitch. Be sure to stop at your dots and leave the center open. Once you have that done, then we can open out our seam allowance and fold it so that it's right sides facing like so. And we can pin it. If you prefer to baste the raw edges together, you can do that. Or again, we can just pin it in place. For me, I'm just gonna pin it onto the skirt all at once. But again, you can baste the raw edges together here. You can give it a good press so that it holds the fold or you can just put pins in it. Let's go ahead and grab our skirt now. We're going to put the casing on. You wanna make sure though that you have the opening along the outside so you should be able to see it so that way when it is sewn, it will flip up and be on the inside of the garment. I'm gonna start pinning over here on this side and then I will match up all of my notches and just pin the casing in place. Okay, now that we have our casing pinned on, we can go ahead and stitch in a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then you can stitch again within the seam allowance a quarter of an inch away or for me, I'm just gonna use my serger. So if you don't have a serger, you can just stitch a quarter of an inch away from your 5 eighth of an inch stitch and just trim close to that sack and stitching. But again, for me, I'm gonna stitch in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance and then just use my serger to go ahead and trim away the excess and also to clean up the edge. So let's go ahead and stitch it in place now. Okay, now that we have our casing sewn on, you want to press your seam going down toward your skirt. Once you have it pressed, then you wanna go ahead and get your elastic. Your elastic should be one and a quarter inches wide, and you just want to go ahead and measure it according to the guide, the elastic waist guide, which is pattern piece 16. So once you have that cut, you can attach a safety pin to one side, and we're just gonna find that opening that we left and just start to feed the elastic into the opening. Okay, once you have brought the elastic back through the opening, you can pin it together and go ahead and give it a try, make any adjustments that you need to it. Maybe you need to trim away some, or maybe you just need to cut another piece of elastic. Once you are comfortable with the elastic and how it fits, then we can go ahead and stitch it and secure it in place. So what you want to do is, you don't want to stitch your elastic like this, just having it folded like so. You want to lap the ends over. Make sure that they're not twisted first though, and then just go ahead and lap it over like so. And then we can go ahead and stitch it and secure the elastic in place. Okay, after you have your elastic secure, you can go ahead and put it back into your casing. And now all that's left to do is to just get a needle and thread and slip stitch the opening closed. Once you have your slip stitch done on your casing, now we can come down here to the lower edge and start to work on our hem. So the edge down here where we just basted it along the raw edge, you can remove your basting and we want to turn out the facing onto itself. So just turn it out like so and we're just going to fold it onto itself. All right. So again, undo the basting that you put in at the bottom, open out the facing and fold it onto itself onto the outside like so. So it should look like this once you have it folded. I'm gonna put a few pins in it here along the lower edge. And now we can stitch across and an inch and a quarter seam allowance. Now that we have it stitched, now we can go ahead and trim. So I'm going to trim away all of the facing. Right here on the garment though, I'm not gonna trim it completely off like I did for the facing. I'm gonna to trim to within 5 eighths of an inch here from this edge, and then I'm gonna trim it all off. So this is how it will look like once you have it trimmed, and then you can trim away any loose threads that you have. 
now that we have it trimmed, now we can go ahead and press under a quarter of an inch on our raw edge, or you can just finish off your edge the same way I did using my serger. That's totally up to you. Again, you can fold in a quarter of an inch, or you can just finish off the raw edge like so. To stitch our hem in place, first I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this side out, make sure that I have a sharp corner, and this is what that looks like here. So we can go ahead and press up our hem allowance all the way along the lower edge of the hem, just pressing up the hem allowance until we get over here where we left off at. That's why we left that opening edge here. So just make sure again that you have your seam allowance going toward the inside over here with the placket. And you have that tucked in and you just want to make sure that everything is pressed. So go ahead and fold up your hem allowance and give everything a really good press, and then we can stitch it in place. So let's go ahead and do that now. First, I'm gonna go ahead and press my hem in place. Okay, I have my hem pressed up, but before I stitch it in place and close up the top stitching here, I went ahead and lined the skirt up so I could take a look at what it will look like once it is finished and I've stitched my hem. And as you can see, right down here along the hem, it's not gonna be matching, and I want it to be matching up with this front side here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring up my stitch here and stitch across a little bit higher. That way, when I fold it out, it'll be a little bit more even. So again, I'm just gonna come back inside here. I'm actually gonna just kind of lay it over here. So I need to bring my stitch up. I just put a little bit of interface and that's what this black piece is here just to add a little bit of stability right here. But I need to just bring my stitch up a little bit so that when I turn it right side out, we're a little bit more even with the front of the skirt here. So I'm just gonna go back to the sewing machine and just stitch a little bit higher here and see am I getting closer to this side. Okay, this looks a lot better than what it looked a minute ago. So I can go ahead and clean this up and give it a good press. I also wanna play around with this just a little bit. I don't wanna to do too much because I don't wanna stretch it out, but I can probably go back in here and trim some more of this bulk away at the corner. And I like this a lot better. It's a little bit more straight across as opposed to how it was a moment ago. So. So again, if you notice that one side is a little bit longer than the other one, just go up a little bit more on your stitch when you fold it in and then you're all good to go. So I'm just gonna go back to the ironing board, give everything a really good press, and then I'm gonna stitch my hem in place. Okay, I have my hem sewn in place. The next thing for us to do is to go ahead and install the remaining buttonholes that we did not install the first time around. I'm only gonna do one. I don't really have enough room for another one. I don't think it's really necessary down here. But you can, again, just go ahead and put on the final two buttonholes. The last thing for us to do is go ahead and sew on our buttons. So for up here, you want to hand sew your buttons on and then we can go ahead and do the same thing for these two down here at the bottom. And then we are all done with our skirt from my pattern, Know Me ME 2013. Well, that is all for the video. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them down for me below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn your notifications so you do not miss when the next sew along goes live. Until then, lessons everyone, bye.